Messieurs les Présidents, Monsieur le Premier Ministre, President, Messieurs Prime Minister, Ministre, Mesdames et Messieurs les Ministres, Ladies and gentlemen, ministers, parliamentarians, military officers, non-commissioned officers, voluntary or reserve, gendarmes, civil personnel of the National Gendarmerie, dear Mrs. Beltram, dear Mrs. Nicolique Beltram, dear families, Ladies and gentlemen, il était environ 11 heures. it was uh, around 11 o'clock on Friday, the 23rd of March 2018, when Lieutenant Colonel Arnaud Beltram arrived with his men before the supermarket in Trèbes. It took them barely 15 minutes uh, to be on site. What did they know at that point in time? The terrorist who was in there, they knew that earlier he had killed the driver of a car, Jean Mazier, and seriously wounded the driver, Renato Gomez Susna. He'd fired upon gendarmes, injured one in the shoulder, Brigadier Frédéric Poirot in that store where he cowed, he'd killed two men at point bank range. Hervé Sosna, a customer, and Christian Medves, the butcher. At that point, we think of these injured, those who died, our dead and their families grieving. He also knew that the terrorist was holding an employee hostage, that he claimed to belong to this uh, Islamic, evil, vile process, that he was seeking death, his own death, death that others before him had found a death they believed to be glorious but was abject, a death that for a long time would be the shame of his family and his fellows, a cowardly death obtained through the murder of innocent lives. The employee taking hostage was one of those innocent people for the terrorist uh, threatening that life did not count. His fate would no doubt be the same, but that life mattered for Arnaud Beltram. It mattered more than anything else because like any life, it was the source of his vocation to serve, accepting to die so that innocence may live. That is at the heart of a soldier's commitment. Be prepared to give one's life because nothing is more important than the life of a citizen. That is the mainspring of the transcendence that he was imbued with, therein lied the grandeur that shocked France. Lieutenant Colonel Beltram demonstrated through his exceptional career that this grandeur was in his blood, that it radiated from his being, that it earned him the esteem of his superiors. Uh, the friendship of his men. But at that point, however, others, even amongst the brave, would perhaps have hesitated or even compromised, but Lieutenant Colonel Beltram found himself faced with the deepest and perhaps most mysterious part of his commitment. He took a decision that was not only that of sacrifice, but that first and foremost of being true to oneself, true to one's values, true to everything 
that he had always been and wanted to be. This choice resembled him so much that his mother, learning that a gendarme had accom accomplished that almost immediately recognized her son. She knew that it was him even before. Clear-sighted, determined, Lieutenant Colonel Beltram took the place of the hostage from the terrorist. It was slightly before noon. An elite soldier, battle-hardened, sighted for battle in Iraq, knew no doubt that he was meeting death, but before that, he was meeting his truth as a man, as a soldier, as a leader. It was the source of his immense courage to not be denied from others. You have to be true to yourself. He would have reproached himself for not taking that decision. I know uh, what those who were at his side felt that day. They slowly see the minutes unfolding leading to his decision. They see Lieutenant Colonel Beltram lay down his gun, raise his hands, and head towards the terrorist. They knew that everything hinged at that moment. They knew that he would have left his place to no one because the example comes from the leader and exemplarity was for him as it is for each of you a cardinal virtue. <coughs> At the heart of every great courage there is high moral strength that brooks no argument that compels one to act. He was one of the sons that France is honored to count among its ranks. The tribute that the homeland pays today, we pay also to the remarkable acts that occurred throughout his life. When he graduated from the Saint-Cyr Military Academy, he chose the Gendarmerie it became his second family because it was close to the life of his fellow citizens and every day required excellence from him. A gendarmerie which every year pays its toll to security and protecting the French the gendarmerie once again illustrated itself through its mastery and strength, and I pay tribute here to the Gendarmerie of the Ordre, to its chief, Colonel Sébastien de the unit of the assault forces, two of whom were injured in the assault. All are sorely hurt by the loss of their colleague. I know, and the French know, that they did everything in their power to avert the worst, like their colleagues in the police forces, in the intelligence forces, and law enforcement authorities. French do not forget either the price paid by our security forces uh, throughout the country and by our armies who are serving abroad all are entitled to our unconditional respect and all I know share the profound certainty that imbued Colonel Beltram that that his destiny did not fully belong to him that he was in touch with something greater than himself that he had sworn to reach to a higher and greater ideal, and that ideal was the service of France. <coughs> as soon as we learned of what he had done with the uncertain outcome, we all 
trembled. One of us had stood up, upright, clear-sighted, and brave, facing the Islamist aggression, facing hatred, hatred facing murderous folly, and from the heart of the country there emerged the French spirit of resistance through the bravery of one taking the nation in his wake, this uh, incredible determination facing barbarous acts, raising those of Jean Moulin, the resistance movements there emerged in the minds of all French peoples, the Knights of Verdun, the Companions of Jeanne and of Kiefer, of all the women and men who one day had decided that France, French liberty, French fraternity would only survive at the price of their lives. And that was worthwhile because the intolerable can never prevail. The camp of liberty, that of France today, is facing barbarous obscurantism that aims at annihilating our freedoms and solidarities. <laughs> Their religious symbols are just the leading of stray of all spirituality and the very negation of the mind because they deny the value we ascribe to life, value denied by the terrorist of Treb, denied by the murder of Mireille who killed an innocent woman because she was Jewish and profanated our sacred values and memories. No, it's not just terrorist organizations, the Daesh armies, the imams of death that we are fighting against. What we are fighting against is this underground Islamism that makes progress through social networks that acts invisibly and clandestinely on unstable minds, betraying those they lay claim to on our soil, indoctrinate through proximity and corrupt daily, an insidious enemy that requires from each and every citizen, from each and every one of us, renewed vigilance and civic Pride. For several years now, this is a new ordeal, but our people has overcome many others. That is why it will overcome this one too without weakness and why, without being carried away. With clear sightedness and method, we will prevail thanks to the calm and resilience of the French people, a people well versed in the breaths of history as our long and fine history has demonstrated. We will prevail through the cohesion of a nation that is united during these endless hours, ending with the death of the terrorist and the transfer of uh, Colonel to Carcassonne in the uh, command room of the Ministry of the Interior. We all hoped, Chief of the Armed Forces, I too, hoped dearly in the early morning. Alas, we learnt of his death, striking our hearts. Yet in spite of the sadness, in spite of the sense of injustice, the ray that he lit within us uh, did not go out, it spread. 
The name of his murderer was forgotten. The name of Beltrame became that of French heroism, carrying the spirit of resistance, which is the supreme affirmation of what we are for what France has always fought for, from Jeanne d'Arc to General de Gaulle. It's independence, <coughs> it's liberty, it's spirit of peace and tolerance against all hegemonies, totalitarianisms and fanaticisms. May his commitment fuel the commitment of our youth and awaken this desire to serve this France for whom one of it best children after so many others has heroically laid down his life claiming in the face of the doubters the pessimists yes france deserves that we give the best of ourselves yes the commitment to serve and protect can go as far as the ultimate the supreme sacrifice yes this makes sense and gives meaning to our life. And I say this to the youth of France, that it's seeking its path and its place, that fears the future and believes that it will not find the absolute. The absolute is there before us, but it is not in the fanatical ways that the proponents of nothingness would like you to follow. It's not in the abject relativism offered by others. It is in the service, in selflessness, in helping others, in support and commitment for others that makes one useful, better, that helps one grow and advance. That is the way shown by Arnaud Beltram. This commitment, I find it in our military, our firemen, our policemen, our healthcare professionals, our teachers, our civil servants who are active throughout France. Every spark is precious to our country in saving this young woman, Lieutenant Colonel Arnaud Beltram, averted the spirit of giving up and that of indifference that sometimes threatened. He showed that the living bedrock of the Republic is strength of soul. I say this to his wife, to his mother, to his brothers. The lesson that he has offered us is, I know, of an unacceptable price, even if it is the price that each soldier is prepared to pay. The gratitude of the homeland and the honors rendered will not bring you back your loved one and France discovered these past few days his taste for happiness his love for his family his sense of friendship this hero was a man with his history his ties his feelings his doubts and he in turn had his heroes who were the great French soldiers Arnaud Beltram today joins the cortege of valor of those he cherished. He will live in you, through you, in your memory, in your prayers. But he must not be dead in vain. His lesson must remain etched in the heart of French people. His memory will live on. His example will remain. I will make sure of that. I promise you. 
Votre sacrifice, Arnaud Your Beltram, sacrifice, Arnaud nous oblige. Beltram, compels us. It elevates us. It states, like no other, what France is, what it must never cease to be, and that it will never cease to be as long as men and women decide to serve it with courage, a sense of honor, love of the homeland that you demonstrated. To these words, you gave the fullness of your life and the features of your face. At the time of the last farewell, I bring you the gratefulness, the admiration and the affection of the whole nation. I appoint you commander of the Legion of Honor, and I appoint you colonel of the Gendarmerie. Long live the Republic. Long live France. Garde à vous Drapeau de la Gendarmerie nationale, sans votre garde, gagnez votre emplacement. Présenté A. Ah. Ouvrez le banc. Colonel Arnaud Beltram. Colonel Arnaud Beltram. Au nom de la République française. In the name of the French Republic. Nous faisons we promote you de la Légion d'honneur. Commander of the Legion of Honor. Fermez le banc. Au mort.
我哋背先，啊！ drapeau， rejoignez votre garde。